Hi guys, my name is Brooklyn Whitcomb, and today I am going to talk about my reading log for oh, the glare off it, The Midwife's Apprentice. So The Midwife's Apprentice is written by Karen Cushman and illustrated by Trina Shirt Hyman. So if we look at the cover, we can initially right off the bat, again, sorry about the glare, initially right off the bat notice her undertones to use shadowing in her pastel pastel coloring to show she is underfed that she is not malnutrition malnu uh suffering from now malnutrition sorry about that so she's suffering from malnutrition if we look in the background back here i mean obviously it's already called the midwife's apprentice but we can see a baby being delivered back here and we meet another one of our characters which is a cat right there an orange shaggy cat and we can also tell that it's set in medieval times medieval england to be more specific so that main character's name is alice alice when we come into the book doesn't have a name she is constantly called things like brat and eventually she's called by the nickname of beetle so she's called by the nickname of beetle because she is being nicknamed for a dung beetle when they find her, she's sleeping in a heap of manure on the street because it's warm. I I couldn't imagine having to sleep in a heap of manure to keep myself warm at night. So she sometimes begs people for food. Sometimes she finds scraps. Um, but one day she is met by a midwife. And she is so hungry that she musters up the courage to beg. And she asks the lady for some food. And the lady's initially appalled and says, you know, we work for food around here. So she decides to work for this lady. Initially, she is cleaning up floors, doing dishes, house chores. And this lady is just paying her just enough to get by. So she's just getting enough food to pretty much be alive. Enough food to have the energy to do the things that she needs to do. So this lady's name is Jane. And because of her sharp nose and her sharp attitude, Beetle has named her Jane Sharp. So Jane Sharp does this for a while. She becomes this midwife's apprentice. But as the midwife's apprentice, she's not giving a lot of responsibilities. And that's because Jane is jealous. She is scared. She's scared that this little girl is going to take over her stuff if she knows too much. So she doesn't teach her a lot about the practice. But Alice even though she constantly is telling herself that she's stupid, she's worthless, she is learning the tricks of the trade. She's learning all the herbs, all the things that she needs to. So she learns all of these, and she's helping out. She's realizing that even though she doesn't know how to read, she can tell what all these things are. And it's a good thing she doesn't rely on what to read because she can't read labels if there's no labels on the herbs and things to find in the first place. So as time goes on, she discovers this tiny little cat, and because she doesn't know what to name him, she names him Purr. So she names this orange, scraggly cat Purr. And, you know, she goes on to speculate that the reason why Jane Sharp doesn't have so much compassion is that even though she's a midwife, she's lost six children. But that doesn't keep Jane from, well, from ruining other households. So even when Alice catches Jane having an affair with the local baker who is married, has kids, has a family, she doesn't care. Jane doesn't care. She says, well, if you tell anybody, you'll be out in the street, so who are you going to tell? So Alice keeps learning things from her, and eventually she helps this local bully because, of course, she's constantly covered in dung and disgusting, so the local village boys are always teasing her. But one day they push this boy named Will Russet into the river. She helps pull him out. And so now he's sweet. He's sweet to her. So Alice realizes that when she gets older, she wants to use her words softly, like how Will uses them for her now versus how Jane does it. Um, she keeps working until eventually gets to the point where she just runs away. She's tired of it. So she runs away and she runs away to an inn. And there she gets a job as an innkeeper. The inn, inn lets her stay there as long as she does this, this, and this. And they love her. They treat her well. They give her enough food. She's happy. 
Eventually she meets this man that's always hunched over and sitting there all by himself and writing. He's an author. And he wants to teach her how to read, but she doesn't want to learn. So he teaches the cat how to read. And along the way, she just happens to realize how to read because he's teaching the cat. So we keep following this down. We learn all these new characters. And she finally realizes that she's smart enough. She's enough. And she, while she's there at the inn, she delivers a baby all by herself. Um, after she delivers that baby, she has enough confidence to realize she doesn't want to work at an inn for the rest of her life. She wants to go back into town and work with Jane Sharp, become an even better midwife. And so she does. And that's where we leave off at the end of the story. Now, honestly, this book is great. It's probably not good for younger kids, and I would make sure to have parental advice first because there are some curse words in it. Um, to me, crap is a curse word. So I would make sure to have a parental advice first before going forward, have their permission to do it, and I think it's a really good time. It's not only historical fiction, but it has a good life lesson of not listening to those voices in your head, not listening to the bullies, and just all around being what you want to be. Be who you want to be. And it's it's great. I love it. I hope that you guys give it a chance, a chance to try it out. Um, I did make a worksheet off of there that was on my free Teachers Pay Teachers account. So, um, so I got it off of Teachers Pay Teachers. It has a really good way to go about conflict and learn more about growth mindset because I think that's something that our older generation of children really struggles with. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you pick up this book. Again, my name is Brooklyn Whitcomb and you can contact me with any more questions at bmwhitcomb at mail.fhsu.edu. So again, that's B-R-O-O-K, oh, sorry, B as in Brooklyn, M like Mary, W-H-I-T-C-O-M-B at M-A-I-L dot F-H-S-U dot E-D-U. Bye, guys. Enjoy the book.